Okay, one statistical instrument that we should use, but I don't want to spend much time talking about it, is a correlation matrix between the attributes or between the different variables. So this is the, the iris data set. And of course, we have these different attributes. And maybe uh, I'm going to do this in Excel. It might be possible to do this in Weka. But anyway, I'm going to do this in Excel. So in order to do that, I should save this as a CSV file, which I already did. And then I'm going to open it up in Excel like that. And then I'm going to try these steps here. So step one on the top right corner of the data tab, click data analysis. So I'll try that. Uh, data, data analysis should be somewhere. So it, it, it's not here. It wasn't there. So I had to go to home. No, file, sorry. File and options. And I had to go to, uh, where is it? What did I just do? Add-ins, go to add-ins and click here, go. And then click this, make sure this is selected. Click OK. And then if you go back to data, it should be there. OK, so we need that. So it says click uh, correlation. Click in the input range block and select A1 through C10. OK, so let's try that. So we go to here and uh, co correlation here. So click that. And then input range, I guess uh, we, don't, we don't have correlation for non-numeric, so we can only do it for this data, for these variables. I'll just select all of that. Kind of slow. Okay, so do that. And then uh, I think I included uh, labels, the labels. Yes, yeah, so I want to say I have labels. So then I just click OK. And now I get this uh, correlation co uh, matrix. So this tells you uh, how correlated variables are. Basically, that means like, um, so we can talk about uh, somebody's physics aptitude, like how, how good they could be at physics, math aptitude, and art aptitude. So we would think that people that are good at math would also be good at physics. It's not always true, but we would think that the better someone is at math, the better they might be at physics. Whereas we wouldn't think that there's that much of a relationship between someone's math aptitude and their art aptitude. So these two, we would say, are highly positively correlated, whereas these two probably have very small correlation, close to would be the measure would say that it was close to zero. That's what a low um, correlation means. Low means close to zero. High means close to one. But it also could be inversely correlated. For example, uh, someone, well, I can't think of a good example right now, but as uh, if one, when one thing goes up, the other goes down, that would be negatively correlated as opposed to here. And these two here, when one goes up, the other goes up. But there's a strong relationship here. There could be just as well a strong relationship when one thing goes up, another goes down. It's just that the, the that it's going down. So we that's a negative correlation, not a zero. Zero mean is this one. These two, art and math, are kind of zero or close to zero. This is close to one. Something else might be close to math, like inversely proportional to math, which means as the math aptitude goes up, the other thing goes down. So that would be in like close to negative one. So now what we can look at here, and we can look at the sepal width versus the sepal length. So you would think that as the sepal width increases, the sepal length would increase, but actually it's not true according to the data. I mean, I would think that, you know, a flower that has a bigger, bigger sepal width 
would also have a bigger sepal length. But according to this, not true. Um, so because you can see it's close to zero and it's even negative, which means there's sort of like when this increases, this one decreases. Okay, let's look at this number. The petal length compared to the sepal length. Um, that's kind of weird. Oh, I guess they're both lengths. So as the petal length goes up, I, I'm, I sort of forget what these things, I mean, I don't even know what these things are, but I've seen pictures and we've seen pictures together and you can look it up in, on, in the internet and see what a picture of petal length and sepal length. But anyway, according to this, um, the petal length increases. There's a strong relationship with the sepal length. So that means the bigger the petal length, the larger the sepal length. 87 is very high correlation. Uh, here, petal width and sepal width is also quite high. Okay, now these other ones are negative, like this one. Petal width with sepal width is negative. Okay, and this is negative, and this is super high. Um, petal width and petal length. So I, I guess you need to look at the picture of the weka, I'm sorry, of the iris flowers, and then look at this again and see if this makes some kind of sense to us. Okay, now the other thing is, why do we have these ones here? Well, this is just nothing. But, I mean, it's meaningless or obvious. Pedal width versus pedal width. Of course, as pedal width goes up, pedal width goes up. So that's why the correlation is perfect, or 1, or 100%. Okay, so you should uh, include this kind of uh, analysis in your final project. It's just something that it's good to have in there. It's not particularly exactly data science, but it's definitely worthwhile. It's more it's statistics. Now it does turn out you can do this in in Weka as well. Uh, so if you go over to this thing called select attributes and choose this principal components, of course this is after we've already loaded the data in Weka. Uh, and then you do this and um, it looks like, yeah, so it's giving us exactly the same matrix. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the names of the variables here. So I guess, I guess though they're listed in this order. So yeah, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. So I guess you can guess the order from here. So this is the same. You can see these numbers are rounded off, rounded off, but they're basically the same. So you set, you choose principal components from here, and it, it forces us to choose this one. You'll see that, or if it doesn't, you choose this one called Ranker, but it will force you to choose it actually. And then um, just start it here, and you get this matrix. You get other stuff as well, but we're not going to talk about that, at least not now. Um, so you can get it here, but uh, you can also get it in Excel. And to become a little bit clearer about what correlation is, if you've forgotten it from statistics, uh, you can. there are probably hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube about correlation.